Okay, thanks so much. Hey. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you? Mike. Great. Um, well, first off, thank you so much for uh, talking to me. I am a huge fan um, of this little show. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Um, just, um, yeah, it's it, that's a fantastic set. Um, but um, we we had nothing to do with it. <laughs> we wanted. We were like, <laughs> I was like, can we reshoot the cover so Meatwad's a wad and not like a hamburger patty? And they were like, no. <laughs> It's already so in stores. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's great. But, um, you know, uh, I love Plantasm. I uh, thought it was great. Um, I'm kind of curious just to, like, kick this off. Um, prior to this, did, did you all have, like, um, some sequel ideas already kind of brewing? Yeah, we had, I mean, we wrote 20 scripts and so we decided to take number seven and pitch that. So that's why we we got to do this one first. So we're going to do, this is seven out of 20. So as soon as the show ended, we got together and we said, we know they're going to want to make movies. So we got, we wrote 20 scripts, we pitched number seven. So we're going to kind of do like uh, what Star Trek does, which is start at seven or four move on get a new enterprise basically <laughs> and then we'll beam back to the origin which would be zero aqua team zero <laughs> love it yeah. um now i i read that um so they um initially contacted you warner brothers about um wanting a sequel and this, this was during the height of the pandemic is that right yep mm -hmm. um so my, I guess my next question is kind of piggybacking off that, which is what was the um, challenges of kind of working in like the, the height of the pandemic? Um, well, you can't, I mean, we, we used to sit with editors, you know, and you'd try to crack each other up and you'd try stuff. And instead of like writing like a novel worth of notes, you know, and and then that editor having to interpret that and, you know, and th just the standard Zoom call business and drop calls and stuff. It, it's it's kind of daunting and kind of weirdly it was invigorating during what was otherwise kind of a lonely time. So, you know, it's kind of. It's kind of great. <laughs> yeah. Um... It, yeah, it, it's it's funny because, you know, I've talked to a lot of filmmakers um, just having to kind of navigate this new normal of remote calls, you know, not doing things kind of as status quo. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we wrote the whole script over the phone. You know, we weren't even getting together. I mean, everything was remote. And um, even during the shorts that we did for the Internet, I mean, we were recording our stuff at home. I don't even have a setup. I had to kind of make something and uh, yeah, way different, way better to get together in person to make this stuff. But, but we did it, you know, we made it work. Yeah. Um, no, that is really interesting to hear because I feel like, you know, the creative process and, and bouncing these ideas off each other is probably just so much more conducive when you're like in the room, when you can really properly gauge the energy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but it, it, I think it helped that we just had all had those memory muscles of the show and, mm. you know, and it was something that was established. So it wasn't like we were trying to start this from scratch, you know, and everybody knew everybody. And I mean, we had everybody like people that worked on the on the first episode of this show were on this movie. Wow. Matt Jenkins and Craig Harton and Jay Edwards, Nate, Ned Hastings, Jay Edwards, just all these guys that started with us. So it was like great to, um, so what, it wasn't as difficult maybe as just starting from scratch, flat footed, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's a great point because I mean, this movie is just littered full of like great uh, nods for people that are like big fans of the show characters coming back in the flashbacks uh i love that i thought that was so cool what awesome. i loved about this movie is i it's easy if you've never seen the show it, i think it's approachable uh it would be weird to just go into the show or go into the movie without seeing the show but i think you could do it 
but I think you I could think, too, because I think we tried to do a story that was pretty identifiable, even though it was our characters. You could identify with the story. So yeah, we were trying to do something a little broader, but also be able to do what we used to do at the same time as compared to the first movie. Yeah, and I, I love how um, it's very much of its time. I mean, Amazing Corp uh, is definitely uh, Amazon. <laughs> not very no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's a totally different one. <laughs> Yeah. it's like for legal purposes it's definitely not um yeah. you know that george lucas is in our movie oh yeah yeah this we is real tell you where this is true we we mixed it at skywalker and we were like i bet i bet um in the early days lucas had to make some um some sound effects himself and and uh our sound mixer was like actually yes uh, and she played for us a couple of effects that he did. And he's in that movie so many times, he should be, he should get a star <laughs> billing. That's great. Little um, little pockets. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Um, what was it like to record there? Was that kind of a little surreal? We know we did the first movie there too. So yeah, it's always... Uh, a pleasure going out there because it's such a beautiful place. And then that's where they do a lot of, you know, giant blockbuster movies like ours. And um, yeah, it's surreal because it's just loud. It's just huge. Every sound effect you can think of is there. And uh, it's a blast. But we didn't, I mean, we recorded here, but we like mixed it at Skywalker. Right. And usually, I mean, Matt's been to Skywalker a bunch more than I have, but like usually there's a lot more people out there. Right. I mean, like we were the only people, almost the only people working there. It was like Night of the Comet. We were like in this <laughs> valley by ourselves. Nice. <laughs> it was crazy. It was almost like it had kind of a post-apocalyptic <laughs> vibe. But if the apocalypse like works out and it's real pretty and there's a winery. Yeah. Hey, uh, you can do happens. a lot of work. There's a little bit of that in the second movie, which would be actually number two, not number eight. This was number seven. Hmm yeah um now do you have night of the comet back there on that collection of dvds i, I do actually it's right uh yeah here somewhere um let's play a movie. game called scary noises <laughs> <laughs> um i actually got to meet kelly maroney she was super nice um at a convention oh um, that's cool wow. yeah a friend of mine did the effects on it oh wow that's awesome yeah. um but back to our movie yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I first of all, I, I want to say that like the Space Jam's parody was amazing, uh, hilarious. Um, so Sean Kemp is your like LeBron, uh, LeBron James. Um, did you always kind of have him in mind as sort of a stand in for like um, a Le like LeBron? Um, I, I, I was more familiar with him because I read an article about him about being that he was like a weed impresario in Seattle. Like apparently he just has a ton of stores up there. And, um, and I, I actually, I, are you familiar with Tom Sharpling at all? I, uh, no. <laughs> he, well, he's this comedy. He's the president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. yeah you need to go back to school then um <laughs> watch the news <laughs> um tom's a comedy writer does a show called the best show it's really funny and um uh but he uh and he was probably like one of our first like real sort of fans that was that was someone that was doing something in the in like the comedy world that was like uh but but I digress. Uh, but he also used to write for N NBA uh, for Slam Magazine, I think. And I was like, hey, we're looking for a type of player like this. And he just sent me a list. And and uh, but, yeah, I remembered Sean and Sean was great. He was awesome. And he's a mountain of a man. And he uh, threw <clears throat> and he was throwing people around on the set. If you saw the whole <laughs> behind the scenes thing on the desk. And uh, but he was he didn't want to do that. We just kept going really throw them around you know really <laughs> lean into them and um and then i got in the suit and then he 
he'd do it to me, but every time he would like reach down to pick me up and he just picked me up in his shoulders and then cradle me <laughs> and then set me down gently. That's great. Um, so it looks like I need to wrap up, but I just wanted like, I know y'all are probably getting this question so much now, but I feel like I kind of need to ask, will we see another Aqua Teen movie uh, anytime soon? Yes, you will. So right now we're doing a, a new season of the show, but the, the next oh, movie, nice. uh, it's in pre-production. That's that's great. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, as again, as a fan, uh, this was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and I uh, really pre appreciate your time. Oh, we're supposed right. to say, are we supposed to say uh, this is going to, have we said that this is going to be on HBO Max February 8th, the movie? Oh, February 8th. Okay. Um, and it's going to be on Adult Swim on March 12th. So for those people who set their calendars to watch TV shows, <laughs> write that down. That's, that's March 12th. I don't have a time yet. So maybe just put all day on your iPhone so that it'll show up. <laughs> yeah and i will definitely link the date in, in the description of the video so you all can check that out um cool. and absolutely we're checking out also like the 4k is awesome so i think you should pick that up as well but yeah um thank you so much again um thank you nicole thank you thank you